So I tried five Redux alternatives and here's what I like the most. So as we all know, Redux is our beloved React library or just like a state management library that we all use. It's super established. It's being used by millions of applications and very big projects and companies there. It's literally everywhere and we all and we worked with Redux before. But have we ever thought about actually moving from Redux or even giving a try to other state management libraries that are out there, either open source libraries or like made by you know indie developers to teams of developers who made those libraries like a state of art libraries have we ever thought about trying them so in this particular video yes i tried like a to go through those libraries and it tried to go through like five alternatives of react redux so first there is the recoil there is dot i there is zoo stand rematch and the redux toolkit and some of you may come and say oh redux toolkit is the same as redux yes I'm completely aware of this, but Redux, I'm, I'm talking about the mere, bare minimum Redux that doesn't have any optionated thing because Redux toolkit is like an optionated uh, kind of like an implementation of the actual Redux core. So yes, we can just include this if you want, like we can just, you know, like completely ignore that. And as we all know, React Redux, Redux, in general in here is very established and, and it's very, very famous among Rock React developers and everything. Right here on the NPM download page, 6 million developers are downloaded this. And if you check like the bundle phobia to check how big the size of like, you know, the, the bundle size of the actual React Redux, uh, when you try to install in your application, how, like, what is the bundle size you're gonna get? So you can get like around 14.7 kilobytes and minified plus GCF, so you're gonna for around five kilobytes. So for the application in here, we try to use like a photos kind of application where you get the chance to load many photos and fetch it from an API. And of course you can actually click in here to vote on a photo and you can just increment the vote in here. So you try to implement these same exact application on each one of these state management libraries from Redux, Recall, Jodi, and, and, and the others in here. So I tried to go all of these to actually see what is the difference. So the first state management library I want to try, which is Zustain. So I find Zustain is very close to how Redux is because it's more of like a store, kind of like an oriented, you get like a global store and you get all these like store and you can put methods inside of the store and you can dispatch actions and all these sort of stuff, which is exactly the same what Redux does. So if you're using TypeScript, you can just go ahead and do an interface in here for putting all the state like methods and variables. We got photos in here to hold photos and we got, of course, including a photo, fetching all photos and, and setting or updating the photos inside of the state. Now we're gonna use this interface and we create the store. Simply how to create a store, you do create in here and you're gonna get a callback that has a, a set function. So this set function allows you to manipulate and set data on the actual store itself. And of course, you're gonna be returning an object and this particular object is gonna represent your store. So you're gonna have photos, set photos, vote, and increase vote in here, which is gonna manipulate this store in here. It's gonna use the set function to be able to actually set it. It basically works the same way as React. You get the previous state and you can manipulate and return whatever you wanna do. If you wanna do fetching, which I really like about this one, you can use async functions inside of the store itself without the complicated parts that Redux obligates you to do in order to run async and await inside of the store. So for example, fetch photos, we do async, we, we do await in here, waiting for the photos to be fetched from an API, which is just another function that uses Axios to fetch data from the API. And yet in here, just go ahead and do a set to update the actual photos. And for the actual usage, we just do use photo store, which is the same store name in here, what we try to use. And this will go ahead and return each one of these and we can just go ahead and do like the you know object destructuring notation of ES6 and you can easily get access to all of those in your React application. And of course, each one of these, like it's gonna cause a re-render whenever it changes. Just like that, it's super simple. You can now fetch the old post, you can use photos, you can increase those. And I'm just passing this to my photos list component, which is shared among all the state management libraries. And that's how Zoo stand. It's just so straightforward with the store, with just the simple interface of TypeScript, and you can do async and await inside of the story itself. And because Zustand is so good, actually has almost crossing 1 million monthly downloads on NPM, and for the bundle fovia, it's just three kilobytes. Yes, just three kilobytes. The other library is Recall. So Recall is a newly born, kind of like a state management library, and has been created by the team at Facebook. So it's actually the same team as Creative Fa like React, is working on Recall and actually just doing the state management or the right state management library. So for example, Recall in here actually depends not on the store, not on global store as Redux does or Zustand does, but it's more of like it depends on atoms. So atoms
atoms actually are the fundamental part of actually holding the state. And then each atom can actually hold one particular state. It has a default value. It has a key to identify that particular atom among the other atoms. And of course, you can actually use hooks to access this atom. But the single atom can actually hold one single value at the time. And this one is actually differentiated from Redux and Zustand because it's actually more of a down to top kind of a state management versus the Zoo standard Redux global store, which is a top to down kind of like a store. So to get started with recall, you have to wrap this using the recall route, not like Zoo standard, you don't have to do anything. But here, you have to do a recall route in order to be able to work with it. And for a demo in here, for example, we created an atom. So an atom in here, you can have many stuff. So for example, an atom, and you can have like a default here, I have it as a default or empty array, and you must have a unique key for each atom in here. And obviously, you can just go ahead and do use recall state, there is many other hooks that you can use as well. And here you can just pass in your atom in here, which is a photo state, and you can get the set and the actual value, which is our photos in here. Now you can manipulate whatever you want. One thing I don't really like because you can't actually put these functions, for example, the increase vote function, you can't actually put it inside of the atom. I tried, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I tried many things. I wasn't able to do it exactly as like you, you want to do it in zoo stand, for example, and other state management libraries. So at the end in here, I had to put it into, into like the reacts component, which it's not the great thing in here because this is not going to be shared among others. So if you like export this atom and try to use it on any reacts, other like exported reacts components or whatever, you won't be able to use this. So you have to copy paste this and whatever as well as I wasn't be able to put the fetch in here with asynchronous code maybe I'm doing something wrong, maybe they're missing some features because it's still in the alpha phase or basically in the experimental phase. So it's not like fully established and ready for production just yet. And of course, everything is still working fine by doing this data, it can update the photos and everything. But I don't really like this just putting those in the components, obviously, and that doesn't make any sense for an actual store. But still, if you take a look at the actual react application in here, everything is working fine, we can vote, click on a vote that increases the votes, we got all the photos, we're fetching it from API, we're updating in the state and it works fine. And for the monthly downloads for recall, it's almost like 300,000 weekly downloads on NPM. And the bundle for being here says almost 80 kilobytes, which I still see as like a huge bundle size compared to a state management library like Zoo Standard. Jotai. The other state management library is by the same creator of Zustand that's called Jotai. Now Jotai in here is highly inspired by recall. So it uses the same concept of how recall works by atoms and using the selectors and not using a global top to like down kind of a store. And it's very intuitive, and it's very easy as well to work with. So for example, in here, the primitives actually uses atoms, and you can use uh, read and write atoms in here, as you've seen in here. And you can do like use atom, another selector, and you can select and update the values. It's pretty much has the same idea behind recoil. But what I like about this is actually more kind of like a versatile, and it's super, super easy and intuitive to use. So for example, if we take it to the application that Jodi demo, it's basically the same thing. So what we can do in here actually I can do photos atom so we create an atom which is just going to represent a photos one it's an empty array this is how you give it a default value and I don't I, I really like how this one puts it because you don't need to provide like a kind of like a unique key as you do in recall so I love this one as like so much. Uh, and here the second atom in here what you can do is actually you can have an atom, then you get like the first one is actually a callback that you can return any other atom. So you can have a derived atoms. And this is exactly what's happening in here. The second callback in here is actually the right atom. So this is actually going to be called whenever you try to call the set for that particular atom in here. So you can get the get set and the photo ID, like whatever parameter you want to pass it to that particular set function. And of course, you can do any manipulation. And at the end, you can just call set you pass it the actual atom, which is the photos atom, because this one is actually a derived one. And you can do the updated photos. That's it. And you can derive and do whatever you want and really enjoy with this one. Uh, for example, for fetching, I can do fetching as well, I can go ahead and derive the photos atom, and I can do a fetching one, which is going to use async out of the box. And it can asynchronously fetch all of those and it can send them and it can just work with them. I mean, it's crazy. I really love this idea. It's super simple and super, super easy. If you want straightforward, very simple kind of a state management library, 
I would highly recommend Jota. If you take a look at the NPM page, it has around 188,000 downloads compared to a small library. That's a very big number. For the bundle phobia, we check the bundle, which is 8.8 .8 kilobytes, like a nine, nine kilobytes, just in size of that particular bundle, which is a lot much, much more smaller compared to Recoil. The other state management library that's called Rematch that actually takes how Redux works and the boilerplate side of Redux and how everything is put together in classic Redux and actually takes it to the next level by simplifying that and actually exclusively rematch is actually redox best practices without the boilerplate. Now, since the rematch actually is actually more of like a redox, but it's made a little bit easier and better, like less the boilerplate, you still need to provide the provider in here and you still need to create a store and you still like need to initialize the configure store and you still need to have like models, for example, in here. And obviously the models are going to be like the small slices or reducers as we call them in redox. So you like they got the photos in here, which I'm importing from the rematch. And this is actually our component. Now our component here is pretty simple. You you need to use like the create model function that allows you to create an actual model. So if you're doing TypeScript, you're going to find it a little bit slightly more complicated to deal with the types and everything. So you do create model, you're passing the times and you create an actual object. So it holds the initial state or the actual state where you got in here. It holds the actual reducers, which going to of course, obviously going to manipulate the state, which is are just like methods that can take the state, a payload, and obviously you can just manipulate whatever in here by just returning it like increment votes. And you can do the same thing in here by just returning the the updated photos. And last but not least, what I really love about this that I wish Redux would do the same way in here is actually having effects which are side effects. And you can run async functions just right inside of that without using like Redux Thunk or Redux Sega, whatever you probably want to call it about the Redux middleware kind of ecosystem you can do it right out of the box. And when it comes to the usage, you can just do use a use selector, which is important from the React Redux. So you can use the same selector, the same dispatch, the use dispatch in here from React Redux, and you can easily access the photos and dispatch whatever. Now, what I like about the dispatch is actually you can do dispatch and you can actually access the same actual reducer and you can do call the actual methods inside of that without dispatching different actions. And on the NPM page is being used like around 41,000 times in here. I don't see that big potential about this library, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. And also in the bundle phobia, you still get around 80 kilobytes in here, uh, not just zip. So yeah, and the other one, which is Redux toolkit. So I don't see this one as like an alternative to Redux because Redux toolkit is this, you know, this, this particular library is made by the, by the actual Redux team to better simplify and make it a lot of it easier for beginners and everyone else to pick up Redux and get started with it without setting up the zillions amount of like lines of code. So yeah, I wouldn't imagine anyone getting started in 2022 with actual Redux and without using the Redux toolkit. But still, I just wanted to look at the Redux toolkit and the actual implementation. So for example, in here on the Redux toolkit, you still need to provide a Redux provider with that Redux store. If you look at it, the store is basically another, you know, just like an object that holds a bunch of reducers together. And here, for example, you got the photos and obviously if you're using TypeScript, you need to provide all the times. And for example, the photo slice, I got it on the same component. Now, what I like about the Redux toolkit is actually you get everything on Redux, all the features that I love about Redux, but it's a little bit more optionated, which means it's a little bit more simplified and easier to pick up and work with, especially for beginners and people who don't like have the time to actually go in and set up Redux every single time. So you create simply a slice, you get a name of the slice, it has to be unique, you get like an initial state with TypeScript and everything. And you got the reducers in here, it's going to you know, obviously do the same thing as any reducer. But the extra reducers, what I really don't like about this one, you have to actually use the builder API to add a case, which is basically doing all of those just to be able to fetch the photos and to run async functions. And you have to use the create async function here, which makes it a little bit more complicated. Maybe I haven't, maybe I don't know about a better way to do this in Redux. If you know, let me know in the comments. But this is what I found. And this is how I was using it in the past couple of years, obviously. And it I don't like this one. I don't like how creating async fun just to get async functions or async methods inside of the store. And yeah, and you can obviously you can access the actions in here by just like this simple API, you can use the dispatch to dispatch a new increment votes or fetching the photos in here. It's just that simple as well. So the campaign page here says 2 million, which is I see it pretty fine for such a very good uh, kind of like 
library in here for Redux. And plus in here, the bundle phobia is still a bit big, but it's not that big though. So to conclude, here are the takeaways for each state management library after I tried all of them. So for example, for recall, you want to pick this up by because like this is created by the Facebook team. So you know, this is actually very reliable. They are the same creators of React and many, many more other open source libraries. Uh, it's still an experimental. So yeah, I wouldn't bet in this one, I wouldn't go with it because just write this one. And of course, it has a lot of support, as I said before, because it's Facebook, and there's a huge community behind it. So it same implements the same recall concepts in here, but a little bit better, you're going to find atoms are a great technique that can improve your application performance. So you're going to find this one really good if you want to like small pieces of atoms that can, you know, pick up and make the state that they can derive and work together. This one is perfect as well. The other one which I like so much is Zustan. So Zustan actually is perfect for beginners. So if you're a beginner, you want to pick up a state management library that's easy, intuitive, go with Zustand. Uh, it's easy to get started with, as I said before, it's very small bundle size, it's actually the smallest one among all these state management libraries. And of course, when you think about just state management, this will do it. So just just state management, there is actually middlewares in the Zustand kind of ecosystem, you can install middlewares, and you can use them. But for just state management, you can get started with Zustand very easily. Now for rematch, I'm not a really big fan of what rematch actually offers and the idea behind it, I see that it actually implements it quite good and actually goes and get rid of the actual boilerplate code in here, but it doesn't do that much of things that you would anticipate from a state management library. So this is all like kind of like it gets Redux, it installs Redux behind the scenes, but it just allows you to create or basically provides you with a better API that eliminates the boilerplate codes for you to, you know, make it easier for you to use. And obviously, last but not least, which is the Redux toolkit, which I don't imagine anybody in 2022 using Redux without going through the Redux toolkit in here, because it's such easy, it gives you a super intuitive and optionated API that makes it super easy for a lot of developers to work with Redux, and you also to create slices and actions very easily. So yeah, if you think that you need Redux food features and tool sets and middlewares and everything, that is in Redux like ecosystem, go with the Redux toolkit for sure.